Hey, before I dive into this video, I just want to remind you we are on our road to 150,000 subscribers. If you end up enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and go down in the comments below and tell me what your favorite announcement was from the latest Nintendo Direct. It's no secret that the last Nintendo Direct was pretty awesome, right? We talked about it on a podcast for nearly four hours because that's just how insane that direct was and look i think like the games they showed in that direct we're going to be talking about for months and months to come like metroid prime 4 isn't coming until 2025 so yeah we'll be talking a hell of a lot about that game over the next year you throw in the new zelda game echoes of wisdom we'll be talking about that a lot in the upcoming months as more and more news keeps dropping for that but what's really fascinating is some news that dropped for this Nintendo Direct. Now, we already had some tidbits here and there. As an example, this Nintendo Direct was the most watched in terms of, well, it was live, right? The live version of the Direct was the most watched Nintendo Direct in Japanese history, which is really fascinating considering how many Nintendo Directs Nintendo has had. Now, we had a really long topic that actually went live over on our uh, podcast clips channel on the show last week talking about how this might have been the best Nintendo Direct ever. And if it wasn't the best, it's at least one of the best. And one of the really best ways to measure this is how many people were interested in watching this direct and that's where things get really fascinating because we have a lot of statistics backing this stuff up as an example over on this esports charts uh thing you're seeing here on screen where it talks about the nintendo direct it tracks the live viewers of all versions of the nintendo direct so the u.s japan whatever and the peak live viewers were at two million nine hundred and sixty two thousand two hundred and thirty nine that was the peak number of people watching the nintendo direct across the globe live and that's impressive enough but they actually had their largest audience in terms of nintendo directs that is with their average live views of 2,211,415 viewers. And that is absolutely insane. It's even more insane when you consider the airtime was 55 minutes, which we know that's not actually how long the Direct was, but, you know, they had the Direct live a little bit early ahead of time. Uh, you know, not with countdown timers, but just to let people get into the stream ahead of time. This Nintendo Direct was it was really hyped. It, it was really, I mean, even even if you just glance at the Nintendo of America channel, you can see that, you know, after fact, right, because people watch it after the fact, there's 5.4 million views on that Nintendo Direct, which did beat the one back in September, did beat the one back in June of last year. Uh, it also, while it hasn't got ahead of the Nintendo Direct from February of last year, it's well on pace to pass that. Don't be surprised. I mean, that, that, that thing's been out for over a year and has 5.7 million views. It's probably going to pass that. Uh, it passed the one back in September before that. Um, it did not pass this interesting t uh, 6 million one. I'm curious if we're going to get past that one back all the way in 2022. But still, it is widely considered to be one of the most viewed Nintendo Directs of all time. It had the most highest active live viewers. And the reception has been absolutely insane. If we go over even just to my channel, I know my channel is kind of a small subsection of the Nintendo community. It's not a great representation. But if you go down to our poll, you can see we had 5.6 thousand views, uh, votes. And there's a lot of them are A, B, and a little bit for C. I mean, if you just look at the A and B category... Guys, that is uh, that is a clear 89% of people who voted thought the Direct was pretty damn good, with 61% thinking that it was excellent. So that is, man, that's a really, really, really high percentage. Whoever gave it F tier, by the way, I don't know who you are. You need to maybe expand your taste in video games. <laughs> Had to be something in that Direct you liked, it, right? I don't know. Maybe you base your grading on Directs that the whole Direct appeals to me not just one game. I'm kind of one of those people that when you have events like this, as long as one game appealed to you, it can't be a bad event. Again, these events are trying to appeal to 141 million users. They're trying to get something in there for that entire audience. So if you got one game out of it, that should be considered at least a C direct. You know, that, that That's the way I kind of view things. But hey, everyone grades on their own scales. But this Nintendo Direct really was a special event to me. It really culminated what we've been waiting nine months for, right? A lot of people thought there wouldn't be anything happening in the second half of this year, and yet here we are with one of the better second halves Nintendo has had during the Switch generation. Now, it's not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like this is the best, 
you know, half of Nintendo releases we've ever had. I mean, God, 2017 was incredible. Uh, they kind of repeated that again years later. Uh, we, we've had a number of incredible six-month periods for Nintendo. But if you just look to what's happening this year, they clearly have a roadmap to do what they think they need to do to sell that 13.5 million Switches. You know, you got things going on like Mario Party, right? Like That's probably going to be the best-selling one, the new Mario Party, Super Mario Party Jamboree. If it ends up actually being the biggest Mario Party ever, which is what they're promising, it doesn't have the most maps ever, but it does have more maps than we've been getting in recent ones but it does have more modes and more mini games than ever before and as long as those things are really really good and they play really well and that 20 person online is just ends up being utterly fantastic and live streamers end up loving it in the end uh mario party jamboree or super mario party jamboree could end up being a 10 million plus seller and look the other two mario party games released on nintendo switch also sold over 10 million and hey I can already tell you right now that Super Mario Party Jamboree is a day one game in my house because, yeah, my family likes to play Mario Party together. So why not get the latest and greatest and have a good time? Plus, hey, 20-player online? That sounds like a live stream idea for me. That's just built for my channel to play with my community. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And I, honestly, it's going to be the biggest seller of the, of the whole bunch, at least here in 2024. Then we got things like, you know, Echoes of Wisdom. And whether or not you think Echoes of Wisdom is a good game or not, look, like, everyone's into different stuff. Some people don't like top-down Zelda games. Some people prefer traditional top-down, not this starring Zelda one. And that's fine if you don't like the game starring Zelda. Some people do. Some people don't mind that it stars Zelda, but they just don't like the mechanics of the game. Hey, everyone's different, right? It, it, this is just the way it goes with all Zelda games. I don't know if there's ever been a Zelda game that's come out that's pleased every single person outside of the original Legend of Zelda when there was no expectations. But ever since the first Zelda game, there's been expectations for every single game after. And because of that, it's nearly impossible for Nintendo to find a way to appeal to everyone. So yeah, do I think Echoes of Wisdom is going to sell 20 plus million the way Tears of the Kingdom did? Well, of course not. But people, there's people that don't like Tears of the Kingdom. So in the end, we just have to sit back and accept Zelda for what it is. And this is a mainline Zelda game. It looks like a lot of fun. A lot of people like me are going to end up playing and loving this game. Probably end up live streaming it. I'm really excited for Echoes of Wisdom. And the you know what's crazy about live streams of this game and just gameplay in general? Nintendo really advertised this as a, hey, uh, you're doing it your way, right? It's your way. How you're going to solve all the puzzles, how you're going to progress through the game. Everyone's experience is going to be a little bit different. The solutions I come up with might be completely different from the solutions you come up with. It actually makes watching people play it not feel so spoilery because... Just because I did something one way, you could come across that same puzzle and do it completely different. So every experience, every playthrough is unique, and that to me is awesome. Uh, I'm really excited for Echoes of Wisdom. But then you look into other stuff that made this Direct really hyped as well. You know, you got to start thinking about what was that other major game coming out this year, right? We have the Mario Party. We have the Zelda. Oh, man, what? We're forgetting that one. Of them. All right, Mario and Luigi Brothership. Yeah, man, Mario and Luigi Brothership coming back. Uh, just to give you guys updates on that, it seems likely that Ilka, the people who made Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, are the developers behind it. Uh, there's actually a fantastic video out there by Nintendo Forecast who went over where all the Alpha Dream developers ended up getting hired. And Monolith Soft ended up with a couple of them, and they could be involved, but uh, the largest chunk, about 12 of them, ended up over at Ilka. Now, again, a lot of us Nintendo fans know Ilka for things like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and obviously a lot of us don't think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are that great. Granted, I didn't like the original games, so remakes that were pretty faithful in a chibi style were probably not going to be my cup of tea either way. I think the games play fine, it's just I just don't think those are like the best Pokemon games anyways. But I, they have made other games, and their other games are, are, are pretty good. There's a One Piece game and stuff, and they're, and they're really solid experiences. So when I think about Ilka handling this, uh, if that is the case, I'm actually okay with it. Look, this Brothership game looks incredible, and in the end, it doesn't really matter if Ilka's making it or if, I don't know, I'm making it in my basement. The bottom line is, we saw the damn game, and the game looks incredible. 
Like that that's the bottom line. I don't need to panic over who's making this game. Is it still Alpha Dream developers? Is it somebody else entirely? Which by the way, Nintendo did confirm there are some Alpha Dream developers working on it. Weird that they still won't tell us who, but then you I mean, guys, you look at the reaction to the Donkey Kong game. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, you can kind of understand why maybe Nintendo thinks it's just best policy not to reveal developers for most of their games. But this game looks great. The gameplay looks looks fun. There's some unique elements to it in comparison to prior Mario and Luigi games. The battle system looks a little bit different, but it all looks coherent. The art style looks really on point. That is one big thing people worry about when you're seeing you know potentially new developers take on uh, an unestablished IP. Will they keep the same art style? They did. It looks great. Uh, I'm I'm just really excited for the future of this game. But then we have to start looking beyond all of that, right? I mentioned how, why doesn't Nintendo just tell us who made that game? Well, look at Donkey Kong uh, uh, Country Returns. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Uh, that was a game that I, I don't think any of us really expected to see. Maybe not surprised because we got Tropical Freeze. But, you know, it is the third time this game is coming out. It already technically got remastered with extra content over on the 3DS. Now it's getting remastered again in HD. And, man, the, the community reaction to this has not been great. Uh, part of it is mostly because it's an unfinished game, right? This game isn't coming out till January. So the game isn't complete. But even in the state that they showed it, there's a lot of visual elements missing or changed or just in many people's opinions, worse compared to even the 3DS version, let alone the original release back on Wii. So there, there's a lot of people just really upset about it. And this, this could be why Nintendo doesn't reveal developers for most of their games in directs, because it, the, you can imagine what this fan base would be doing to that developer. They would be attacking them, destroying them on social media. You could see all the negative reactions. I think it's a little... Much to do about nothing. I would have preferred a new Donkey Kong game versus another re-release. And I'm not going to end up picking up this game because, look, I've already bought it twice. I beat it twice. I don't need to pick it up for a third time. So, whatever. I think it is going to end up selling pretty decent. Uh, pretty decent to me is probably just 2 to 3 million units. But I think it's going to end up selling okay. And most people that play it probably didn't play the other two, so they won't notice the visual differences. But I, I do think that, you know, it's still a high-quality game, right? Like, this was a good game when it came out. They didn't change the gameplay, so it's still going to end up being a good game. But I know people, when they see remasters or HD versions of games, they expect it to at least be of the same quality of, you know, the prior game. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of one that was a little bit better. How about Skyward Sword HD? Again, they didn't make a lot of visual enhancements and changes, but they did HD the game, and it looked at least as good as the original, better for most, and they doubled the frame rate to 60 FPS. They added in the, the new control scheme, so it ultimately ended up being a better version of Skyward Sword. People are kind of like, hey, this game is coming out, and it doesn't feel like a better version of the game. Why would you do that? You could just HD the 3DS version, and it feels like it would be a better version of the game. So it, it just feels kind of weird, but I have to remember, it's an unfinished product. And any of these visual things, like I, I know fans think they're helping the developers when they make all these visual comparisons. We're just trying to let them know what's wrong with the game. You act like they don't know. They're the ones literally working on it, Who, whatever studio it is. They have the original. They know the visual differences because they're making the visual differences. So just to be clear, nothing us fans point out about the game and about the visuals is something whoever's making it isn't aware of. The question is, why are they making these visual differences? Why are they making these changes? That's stuff we don't know, but they're well aware of them. Nothing we're doing is actually helping development of the game. I know fans think that we have a lot of say in how games develop, but in the end, uh, they already know. Will they fix it? Will they make any changes? That we don't know. But again, that game isn't coming out for like seven months. So there's a lot of time between now and then for them to, to do it. We could have just seen it in a beta phase with unfinalized visuals. Or maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a really, really crappy HD port. It happens. It's not as if Nintendo's against cash grabs. Okay, Nintendo will do cash grabs all the damn time. So, uh, yeah, this is one of those, clearly. And we don't know who's making it, but please don't be so hard on the developers because Nintendo is clearly okay with the game coming out in that state. That is, if that is a state that it ends up coming out in. But beyond that, there's also a lot of really great things in the Direct. We didn't even get into everything. Think about the Dragon Quest stuff. You want to know why the Direct was so damn big in Japan? Dragon Quest is massive in Japan. They have a national holiday for Dragon Quest. 
Like, they don't have one for Mario. They don't have one for Zelda. They don't have one for Final Fantasy, but no, Dragon Quest? Oh, Dragon Quest gets a national holiday in Japan where people actually get off work. It's That's how big a deal Dragon Quest is in Japan. The rumors about Dragon Quest 1 through 3, 2D HD being in this direct really drove views in Japan to break those records on live viewers. And yeah, man, like... It looks great. It looks incredible. I never played the original trilogy, so, dude, I'm all about those games. I'll be picking up Dragon Quest 3 uh, 2D HD, you know, later this year, uh, and I'm going to really ha enjoy the hell of that game. For those who don't remember, Dragon Quest 3 is actually a prequel to Dragon Quest 1 and 2. That's why they're bringing us 3 this year, 1 and 2 next year, so then they're releasing them in order of the story. So, yeah, if you're confused and you say, why is Dragon Quest 3 out when 1 and 2 is not? Well, it is the first one you're supposed to play, so... I'm going to be checking that one out myself. I've heard a lot of incredible things. Thunder Stash over there has been really touting and really pulling for me to pick it up. Uh, he's one of the co-hosts of the podcast, so I'm, I'm going to be going ahead and grabbing that one. But there's so many more. Like I, I know that Paul Gale Network and, and many of you fighting fans out there went nuts over the, the that Capcom collection of fighting games, like Marvel vs. Capcom and all this stuff. Seven different games. Uh, there's a beat-em-up in there, a few things. It, it, it just looks like a really great collection for people super into those old school retro stuff so i think that's really great in general the direct was great i mean look i i gave this thing like an s tier to me man if, if there's a rank above an a it's s tier and to me this was one of if not my favorite nintendo direct i would have to go back and look at a couple of the other directs i remember being my personal favorites but usually that was due to like one announcement if you remember june 2019 right the big shocked thing I did on a live stream when they announced what eventually became Tears of the Kingdom because I was so taken aback we were getting a sequel. You know, I thought maybe more DLC, but a full-on sequel. Uh, I was just shocked. And so that was one of my favorites, but it was really just that one moment, right? That one moment is not the same as a direct full of a bunch of stuff, including, by the way, a game we barely touched on, Metroid Prime 4. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Metro Prime 4 is just what 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 a closer. That game looked incredible as well. And and hey, if you guys are interested in a ton of Metro Prime 4 content, I do encourage you to go check out Andres Restart. He's got a full graphics comparison video out. Uh, I know about another video he's dropping soon uh, with a huge discussion on Metro Prime 4. You guys really should go check it out. He's staying on top of Metro Prime 4. He's maybe the biggest uh, Metro Prime fan that I even know. Uh, him and Super Metal Dave 64, those are like the two guys that, at least in the content creator space, I know are just like mega fans. And I love Metroid 2. Hello, Nintendo Prime, Metroid Prime, get it? Uh, but, man, well, we're going to have all the coverage and all the news right here. If you want the deeper, big diving into stuff, you're going to want to check out Andres Restart's channel for that stuff. Uh, that being said, I do want to thank all of you guys for being here. It's been a, a lot of fun making this video, talking some Nintendo Direct goodness. I have no idea what the next video is going to be. I do know that we have a podcast this week, though. Uh, still happening, same time, same place, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I will attempt to be there if the internet <laughs> on my vacation allows me to be, but I already have all the plans in place. For Eric and Thundersass. Thundersass is hosting the so show. Eric's running the show from my house. And it's all going to be good. Everything's good, because why wouldn't it be? It's vacation, baby. And I got, like, the best Nintendo Direct ever right before vacation. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah, what a life. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.